I'm freaking out here, guys. I'm freaking out here, guys. There's something going on. It's not right. I think... I think this whole time, ever since the very beginning, I've... I've been... I've been the dragon! Ah! I know, right? Wait a second. Wait a second. If I'm a dragon, Kaido's a duck, Luffy's a monkey, then what the hell is Barry? Karzu! Ah, oh, fuck, she's crap. Oh, whew, that was a weird one. Oh, I need to get more sleep. What the? All right, so uh, anyway, hey guys, how you doing? I was just setting up the video and then I fell asleep in front of the camera. You know, happens to the best of us, really. Today's video, we're going to be talking about Kaido being a dragon. Last episode showed the triumphant transformation. We even got to see like the halfway point there, kind of like a mix of his hybrid form. So that was really cool. We got to see that very briefly. Uh, we've yet to see Kaido's hybrid form in the manga yet. So this is the closest we're probably going to get for a little while there, um, considering we're in this flashback right now with Odin and Whitebeard might be a while until we get to see the big man himself. So, um, you know, I thought I would talk about something. This is a theory that's been around for a while. It was pretty much a theory ever since the first time Kaido transformed. Um, you assume from the beginning and considering all the other zones we've seen in the story, um, that Kaido is a human that ate some kind of dragon fruit, allowing him to turn into a dragon. Well, the theory goes that he's not a human that ate the dragon fruit. He's a dragon that ate some other kind of fruit. Uh, some kind of, like, a mythical oni or demon or devil fruit or ancient giant fruit something of that like I guess it wouldn't be the ancient giant fruit because Kaido would be a lot bigger he's smaller than Big Mom but you know that was the general idea we already know that dragons are a thing in One Piece like this was confirmed okay it was uh, revealed that Ryuma slayed a dragon 400 years ago the Tenryubitos have some kind of connection to dragons um, it might very well kind of be like Game of Thrones where dragons used to exist and used to you know cover the skies but then some Something happened over the centuries and they no longer uh, are around as much. And also, let's not forget the dragons that were present on Punk Hazard. We had dragon number 13 and that other smaller green one. Those were results of Vegapunk's experimentation, okay? So the way I think of that, and I've talked about that before in other videos, is that the Tenryubito, at one point, like hundreds of years ago, back in their height of power, like when they first took over the world and the world government and all that stuff, they had legitimate dragons that they rode around on. And then over the centuries, they began to die off or other people started attacking them. Something happened to the dragon population in One Piece. But the Tenryubito still remember that. They still have probably legends and history books about all the time that they flew around on dragons. The symbol of the Tenryubito is the hoof of the celestial dragon. So sort of like, imagine that. Imagine like 800 years ago, celestial dragons were like flying around on actual dragons. They'd land on an island and take the hoof of that dragon and stamp it right in the island to kind of indicate that this is the property of the Tenryubito. I can kind of see that. So something happened happened to them and they approached Vegapunk and being like we want to go back to that we want to have this these dragons around again so we can ride on them and really be like the supreme gods of this world so they um, basically hired Vegapunk in order to make dragons for them and he didn't really I mean he, he succeeded I mean if you want a dragon I mean that's a dragon pretty much you look at that right there you're not gonna say nah, that's more uh, that's more lizard than dragon no it's a dragon so it seemed like dragons at least did exist in the past also, we have the Ryu Ryu no Mies, the dragon dragon fruits that, you know, X Drake has the Allosaurus model, Page One has the Spinosaur model, um, you know, we have uh, Queen that has the Brachiosaur model, and they're always referred to as the ancient versions of the dragon dragon fruit, pretty much because the word dragon and dinosaur in Japanese are basically the same, so that's where that comes from, right? So, a lot of talk of dragons. Despite that, despite all of that talk of dragon, Oda has yet to actually confirm what the devil fruit that Kaido has is, like what the name of it is. When he first turned into a dragon, the first time we saw it, you know, when Luffy and everybody were at the castle and they were seeing the dragon, you know, in the distance over Okabore Town, Luffy's like, Kaido's a dragon! And Kinemon's like, yeah, I forgot to tell you, he is. Now, 
Remember, Kinemon and the rest of, you know, the people of Wano, they don't really know about Devil Fruits too much. Too much. They have Devil Fruit powers, but they're not aware of the fact that they're, like, magic fruits that are all over the world, and they're particular, like, they're divided into different categories, and, like, Zone, Paramecia, Logia. They don't know anything about that. All they know is they ate weird fruits one day, and then all of a sudden could do sorcery or ninjutsu or something, right? So, yeah, it makes sense that Kinemon would not immediately know, oh, yeah, Kaido ate the, uh, the mythical dragon dragon fruit. That's why he can turn into a dragon. He just knows from his past experience with Kaido when 20 years ago, before they made the time jump, when they were running through Wano and they witnessed, you know, Kaido and Orochi taking power over and everything like that. At that point, they witnessed, um, Kaido turning into a dragon. Also, it was probably during the same fight where Odin fought against him because Odin was the only person to scar Kaido in that form. We see that scar on Kaido's body and, you know, Odin was a badass, so he took is, you know, Enma and Ame no Habakiri and shh, two sword Odin style and sliced up Kaido. That was probably the, the first time Kinemon saw him and like, oh my god, how are we going to even deal with this guy, right? Um, so yeah, Kinemon and the other members of like the group, like Kanjiro and Raizo, they know Kaido can turn into a dragon, but they don't know anything about Kaido beforehand. They didn't know about Kaido when he was a member of the Rocks crew because Wano was so isolated, right? So they have really no idea other than just seeing the dragon form before. They don't know anything more than like Luffy or Law or anybody else, really. Um, Law knew about it too. I I'm assuming that Kinemon just told Law about it while they were staying at Wano because Law and their group got to Wano weeks before Luffy did. So Kinemon probably sat them all down and be like, Yeah, by the way, just letting you know, Kaido could turn into a dragon. Law's like, Uh, crap, it's probably like a mythical zone or something. This <laughs> we're signing up for a little bit more than we figured here. Why didn't Oda just be like, This is you know, Kaido of the Hundred Beasts and he's got the mythical Ryu Ryu no Mi? Model Shenron or something. Now, it could just be that we're waiting for, like, the serious battle when we get to Onigashima and Kaido is, like, you know, he's getting drunk at the fire Festival and he's like, Oh, these kids think they can bash my party? And he just throws it. You mean crash the party? Shut up! I know what I said! Look, look. He gets he, he down some sake and then he transforms into his giant dragon form and then straight up in his dragon form attacks the, um, the invading army. Right, and at that point, it's revealed Kaido of the Hundred Beast Pirates, and he's got the Ryu Ryu Mythical Zone, you know, uh, model Chinese dragon, because that's what Kaido is. He's a Chinese dragon. Except Chinese dragons mostly involve manipulating water, and he can very much breathe fire. That's something else in the anime I, I didn't even really notice in the manga was no, Kaido's not just a dragon, he's a dragon that's perpetually on fire. So, yes, right? Now, let's go back a little bit here. Let's talk about his younger years. We don't know that much about Kaido at that point in his life, but we know he was considered an apprentice pirate when he was on Rox's crew 38 years ago. I always assume that Big Mom and Kaido are around the same age. Big Mom's 68, so I always thought Kaido was like, eh, maybe, you know, early to mid-60s. Maybe a little younger than Big Mom, but not by much. But now, according to that flashback and what we know about apprentice pirates, whenever you're considered an apprentice, you're pretty much like, you know, in your early teens or mid-teens. Like, look at Marco. Marco was 15 years old when he was considered an apprentice on Whitebeard's crew. Buggy and Shanks were considered apprentice pirates on Roger's crew. They were were part of the crew when they were nine years old all the way up to when they were like 14 I believe is when they reached Raftal right so that that age right there so I mean I'm sure everybody's crew has a different definition of what apprentice means and stuff um, and when we see the silhouette of Kaido here it doesn't really look like he's a little kid but then again it's Kaido so like if there's any character you could say like oh yeah that person right there that looks like in there in their mid-20s that person's eight years old. I'd be like, if it's Kaido, I can kind of buy it, you know? Um, there's also, like, Jack. Jack was apparently, like, what, like, eight years old or something like that when the actual, um, when they take over, take over of Wano occurred. He, he was a little kid there, too, and he was pretty big for his age. Jozu was only 12 in this backstory with Whitebeard right here, and he looks pretty big. So back then, though, like, if you want to say Kaido was only 12 years old in this backstory, 
I, I could buy that. I really could. And he was just that strong at that point in his life. Um, you see, he still has the horns. That's how we can tell it's clearly Kaido in this picture there. So I'm assuming the horns are not something that he received. Um, you know, they're not, they're not like an attachment. They're not like Jack's things that are like, you know, there are swords inside of them or like there's some weapon he keeps on them. I guess they could be, but considering he had them way far back, like 38 something years ago, and they, we always see them attached to them. I'm going to assume they're actual horns okay um so let's look at this a few different directions okay he's some kind of yokai some kind of oni being some species that we haven't been you know shown yet in one piece or kaido might be a crossbreed from other races okay he might be like you know his dad was an ancient giant his mother was a human not gonna ask how that works, but it's One Piece, so it's works. You don't ask how a Waylord and a Skitty could 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 have an egg together, but it's totally possible in the Pokemon games, all right? You just roll with it, right? So that could be a situation there. He might not be Kaido himself, might not be some other species all of them to himself, like some sort of demon race or yokai race. He could just be like, you know, a, a, a half human, half ancient giant, you know, hybrid there. Okay, and that would account for his, you know, he's a he's a big boy when he's a little kid, and he's super strong. He could swing that Kenobo around at like the age of five. You know, that, that would explain that sort of stuff right there. It would also explain why his base stats are really high. Because it was shown that like, you know, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, Kaido wins. He's ridiculously strong. He's a tank. Um, his stamina and all that stuff is insanely high. Um... And so we even see that, of course, when he jumps off the Sky Island and crashes into the ground. Now, normally, I would say that has nothing to do with his zone power, because he clearly wasn't in dragon form when he did that. When he jumped off the uh, balloon terminal, he was clearly in his, like, uh, let's just call it, you know, base form. It could be human, it could be ancient giant, it could be something else. But he was not in his dragon form or in his hybrid dragon form when that happened. So he just jumped off and just crashed into the ground. That is normally what I would say. However, mythical zones, they kind of change the rules a little bit. For example, Marco. Marco doesn't have to go in his hybrid form or in his full Phoenix form to have the effects of his uh, Flames of Rejuvenation. We saw that at the Sphinx Island when he's a doctor. Marco can kind of just summon his flames. Because remember, when you have a mythical zone, you have the ability to turn into a mythological creature for one, but you also get kind of like a bonus ability to that. You get like a, a Paramecia ability on top of a zone ability. So Goku could turn into a Buddha. He also had uh, access to those shockwave abilities. Um, and with Marco, yeah, he can turn into a phoenix. He can fly. Hybrid form, of course, also. But he can also create those flames of rejuvenation even if he's in his human form, okay? He can just, like, you know, flicker them on his hand and then just use them to heal people or himself, okay? So mythical zones kind of change the rules around a little bit. So it's still possible that the dragon fruit is the thing that gave him that indestructibility, and he's able to just... Even doesn't matter what form he's in, he's able to get the effects of that indestructibility. Okay, so that's another possibility there too. I'm just a really strong human that ate the dragon fruit, and because it's a mythical fruit, I now have the ability to create horns, you know, whatever. I can take on dragon scales or dragon claws into my human form whenever I have more freedom of reign of transformation here, okay? Um, you know... Or it could be just a regular human human fruit that he ate. Obviously, it would be a different model than the kind that Chopper ate. But considering all the different kind of humans we see in the world of One Piece, that could be possible too. Um, you know, like we see giant humans that exist. Uh, like the superhumans in Frankie's family, right? Maybe there's a version of the human human fruit that allows you to turn into that specific kind of human. Moria is kind of like an onion human, you know? Maybe there's a fruit that turns him into that. Moria! We have no idea what's up with Moria. That's kind of a debate for another day if, if Moria is also some sort of like half breed of some other kind of race or something like that we, we just don't know um but yeah that that's the thing about Kaido though there's a bunch of different ways you like what what makes him str so strong you could say he's just a really strong human that ate the dragon fruit but if it was that simple I feel like Oda would have revealed that by now I feel like there's no reason for him not to, especially with all these other dragons going around. What's the problem with just being like, yeah, this is Kaido. He's got the mythical dragon fruit. Boom. There you go. Um, I guess I should also bring up at this point, you know, what's the difference between like, oh, okay, there's, 
dragon fruits that are ancient but they were because they actually existed but then there's also a mythical variant I, that's not really a problem. I mean, the same thing happens with the human-human fruits. Chopper has a regular human-human fruit. Sengoku has the human-human fruit as well, except that is a mythical variant. There's probably also ancient versions of the human-human fruit, like you turn into like a Neanderthal or something, you know? So I'm not, I don't have too many problems with that, that there would be like, okay, here's the ancient variety of the Ryu Ryu no Mi, which is like dinosaurs, because dinosaurs and dragons are kind of the same. And then there's maybe also a mythical variant of that, which is not the kind of dragons that existed like in history these kind of these kind of dragons are like the kind that kaido turns into where he can kind of create clouds and walk on top of it and stuff like that um also very similar to um uh, Momo's fruit, his artificial zone that Vegapunk was working on. Vegapunk might have been aware of Kaido's existence and like, oh man, he has this mythical dragon fruit. Well, if I'm going to try to create an artificial zone, I might as well create one of the strongest ones in the world, right? I might as well create an artificial mythical zone. Also, it's been stated before that Kaido was captured by the Marines a few times, as well as with the other Yonko. You know, Kaido has been defeated and captured before. They were just never able to execute him. So, maybe at one of those times when Kaido was captured by the marines um they might not have been able to hurt him in any major way but maybe kaido was able to be studied by vegapunk a little bit and then he's like oh okay this i can kind of understand what's going on here with his transformation and his devil fruit maybe vegapunk has some sort of machine or something that can like scan a devil fruit user and find out what's really going on because vegapunk cracked the nut on all of this he knows exactly how all devil fruits work down like the gnat's ass and everything like that so maybe vegapunk's like scanning oh okay you have a mythical dragon zone or i'll try to replicate that now now now, when he created that replica, he did state it was a failure. Um, it might be considered a failure because Momo can't really control the transformation. He just kind of goes in and out during his, like, whatever emotional state he's in. So, you know, that, 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 that might be the reason, or it might just be really frail, or there might be some other flaw with the fruit we haven't really encountered yet. Um, but, you know, so he tried to do that, though, right? Okay. So, yeah... What do you guys think? Um, do you think do you think he's like an Oni or something? I mean, it would definitely fit the aesthetic of Wano. I mean, we, we've kind of seen like, you know, Oni Maru, who's a Kitsune. That's a yokai. You know, we, we could see it happening. And I, I really want that yokai species to exist. Or the simpler reasoning is just be like, oh, he's half ancient giant, half human. I, out of all these theories, I think that one is probably the one that's the most likely to occur next to just him being a really strong human. Or maybe not even like his parents were like ancient giant and human, but just like um, his one of his ancestors were. Like if you go back like 10 generations, you know, his ancient giants, you know, that's his heritage. And then slowly throughout the generations, the blood starts to get thinner and thinner as more humans are mixed into it. And eventually you get Kaido. Um, you know, this, this might, I, we did that cars joke earlier. Or maybe this is a situation with like cars you know how cars like wiped out his whole freaking uh his species in jojo's uh maybe kaido was born to this select very small tribe of um you know uh ancient giant humans that have the blood of them inside of them and kaido was like the strongest out of that group and he's just like i want to test my skill and boom and just annihilated his entire family and just set out to sea and eventually stumbled upon rox's crew as an apprentice when he was relatively young and now here we are 38 years later i guess also kaido would probably be like if we're doing by that logic that he was like maybe a little kid when he was on rox's crew little kid by our standards you know he was you know pretty big um but maybe he's like in his 50s right now i could see that right now he's a lot younger than big mom than wiper than i originally figured right he might be just in his 50s so yeah though he is a dragon that is also a duck that is also potentially on fire uh perpetually on fire and he also has the ability to breathe fire he can also summon clouds he can also control the weather he can also uh you know drink a lot has huge horns indestructible really strong and possibly also an oni discuss all right. Well, anyway, that was a really scattered shotted video, it felt. There's a lot of stuff to unpack here with Kaido being a dragon and all that, but I hope that made somewhat of some kind of sense. Um, I'm kind of warming up to the theory a little bit more now. I, I wasn't really a big fan of it at first, like Kaido's an Oni, some sort of demon person. But now, eh, looking at it, I'm like, that would be actually a pretty decent twist in this story. Okay, because, you know, aside from Chopper and a few other rare examples, we don't really see the fact that it's, you know, the animal that eats the fruit that becomes more human. It's usually the human that eats the fruit that becomes more animal but it might be the opposite side around there and if that's the case uh kaido is just one of the ancient dragons maybe the last of his species that still exist in this world that is a legitimate true dragon possibly 
All right. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Barry, good to have you back. Hope you enjoyed your weekend off, buddy. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. This will be Techie 101 signing out. See you, everyone.